So we'll try to keep this quick. We're converting vector equations to Cartesian or parametric equations. So we're going to do it in 2D and then we're going to do it in 3D. So here's my vector equation. This is my starting position, i plus 5j. And this is a, a vector that is parallel to the line's direction. All right, so if I want to do this, what I need to do is group my i components and my j components. So I have i plus ti here. And I have 5j plus 2tj here. Now I can factorize these so I can say that i bracket 1 plus t and j bracket uh, 5 plus 2t. Now this tells me my x coordinate and this tells me my y coordinate. So I can now say that x is equal to 1 plus t and y is equal to 5 plus 2t. Now these equations here are actually special and this is the parametric equation. It's a set of equations that describe the x and the y coordinates at some time t. And from here, we've done this stuff before. We uh, rearrange 1 to make t the subject. So with this equation here, we can say that t equals x minus 1. And then we sub that into this equation. Final step here is just to pretty it up a little bit. Uh, we can say that y equals 5 plus 2x minus 2. So y equals 2x plus 3, and that is our Cartesian equation of this vector equation. So you can see that if we want to come up with a Cartesian equation, by default we pass through this parametric equations and then end up at the Cartesian equation. Now if you want to reverse that process, it's fairly straightforward, but it relies on you understanding what a vector equation is. So y equals 2x plus 3 looks like this with a y-intercept of 3 and a gradient of 2. Now, you should remember that our vector equation is all about a, a starting position, a vector to a starting position, plus t times uh, a vector parallel to our function, which we'll call vector d. Now, in this one, a starting position vector, one that I can find easily, is one from the origin to my y-intercept. And that vector is simply 0i plus 3j, or just 3j. And now we need to come up with a vector that's parallel to this one here. And given that it has a gradient of 2, that means that it goes up 2 for every 1 that it goes across, which means that its um, parallel vector, its d vector here, is going to be equal to 1 across plus 2 up. Okay, and you can see this is the rise and this is the run, and they're grabbed from here, our gradient. And it's at this point that alarm bells should be going off in your head, because I started with a vector equation that looked like this, i plus 5j plus t, i plus 2j. I converted it to a parametric set of equations, then I converted it to a Cartesian equation, which was y equals 2x plus 3, and then I took y equals 2x plus 3 and converted it back to a vector equation, and I get this, which is different to that. They're not different. They're the same, the same line. You need to remember that a vector equation does not have a unique equation. If anything will do, because you can pick any starting position. In this case, the starting position chosen was i plus 5j, which is right 1 across and here, i plus 5j. But you can see that that i plus 2j is a vector that's parallel. But I didn't have to choose that vector. I could have chosen a vector that was twice as long. So I could have chosen 2i plus 4j. I could have chosen 3i plus 6j and I would still be getting a vector equation of that line. All right, on to 3D. So the process is identical here. I've got a vector equation in three dimensions. I need to expand this and simplify so I have i components, j components, and k components. So I'm gonna expand those brackets and then group some terms. Expanded brackets, and now grouped into my i, j, and k components. Now, you need to be a little bit careful here. With this j component, I'm adding the negative 2, negative t of my j component here. It's nice, it's easier if everything's added 
together, even if both of the things in the brackets are negative. Okay, now I can say that the x coordinate is this, the y coordinate is this, and the z coordinate is this. I'm creating parametric equations. So far, so good. So far, same as 2D. It's when we convert them to um, a Cartesian equation that we run into trouble. So the way that we're going to do that is solve each of these for t, or rearrange each of them to make t the subject. All right, so now that I've rearranged all three of them to make t the subject, uh, you want to be careful here. You don't want it to be like negative y, negative 2. Instead, you want it to be like a positive y, and then have our negative 1 down the bottom here. It's just a little bit of convention stuff. All right, so after that, we can now say that, and this is what our Cartesian form is going to look like, x minus 5 over 2 equals y plus 2 over negative 1 equals uh, z minus 4 over 3 equals t. And this is what we refer to when we refer to a Cartesian equation of a line in three dimensions. You can't get a single Cartesian equation. You get this monstrosity. All right, so that's it in Cartesian form. Now the obvious question is, how do we go from this Cartesian form back to our vector equation? Well, you do the whole thing in reverse. So t equals this, t equals this, t equals this. I can write each of those as parametric equations. So there we have it, t equals that, t equals that, t equals that. And then rearranging them to make them into our parametric equations. They should look very, very familiar. Now, that's going to be our x-coordinate, that's going to be our y-coordinate, and that's going to be our z-coordinate. So we can put it back into a vector equation. Now, that is a vector equation at this point, but it's not the convention that is a vector equation. For that, we'd need to expand all of our brackets and then group all of our t um, variables on one side and all of the others on the other. So when I expand that, all of those terms should look very familiar. 5i, 5i, 2ti, 2ti, uh, negative 2j, negative 2tj, 4k, 3tk, and now I move all of the t ones over here and all of the non-t ones here. Done. And you can see that is identical to that. We've managed to convert from vector to parametric to this strange Cartesian form and back from that strange Cartesian form all the way back to our vector equation form. Okay, that's how we convert from vector to parametric to Cartesian and all the way back again.